preacher. God used him in amazing ways. This is the part he doesn't like. I'm going to talk about him for a minute. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm going to say good things. You may know some formal things like one lead saturate flagler. You know, we had that coming up again February 8th, right? Yes. Yes, where you can come out and... Conveniently after the breakfast. Yeah, conveniently after the breakfast. You can walk off some of those bacon and eggs. Um, but Juan is a real example of what it means to serve. He serves here in the local congregation, as the Bible says. But uh, Juan loves to touch people. He has a heart for people. Juan and Jenny love so many people and bless us in so many ways. And recently, Juan received a little bit of recognition. You know, hold on. So, Chaplain Juan Chavez. He was recognized as 2019 Volunteer of the Year. Now, sometimes it's easy to just quickly read things and not pay attention, but that word at the bottom starts with a B, volunteer, means he doesn't get paid. That means he does it on his own. He does it out of the goodness of his heart. And I know uh, Sheriff Staley, and I know he doesn't take awards and recognition lightly. And I know it's well-deserved. So thank you for representing you, Jenny, and the whole family. Thank you for representing the Chicago people in jail and the first responders that are serving us. They need spiritual guidance. They need the love of Jesus. And there's no doubt, wherever you go, you leave that Jesus footprint there. All right, so let me pray for you, and we're excited about this morning. Father, thank you so much for your loving goodness. Thank you for the way you have gifted us. Thank you for the way that you not only ask us to or tell us to, but you give us opportunity to use the gifts, talents, and abilities that you've given us. So thank you that Juan is here this morning to share his heart. I pray that you'll speak through him in a way that will even amaze him. Thank you for how we're going to be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Coastal. Good morning. Good morning. I like it. I like it. I'm just going to get set up here real quick. Brought the good old angels here today. And I must confess, um, I'm preaching on stretching out in faith. And so before we came, before I came in, uh, the slides that I had prepared, um, I didn't know where they were. So I'm scrambling. I'm like, John, you got to give me some slides. Just put up the scripture. I don't care what you do. And then about midway through worship, I get a message. Well, your slides are fine. They're here. And I'm like, Lord, I had to, I had to repent right, right there. I had to say, you know what? How are you going to leave me up here and not and leave me empty-handed? He's not. So I went through all this, like, you know, running over here. Can you get some slides? Can you just, here's the scripture. Doing all this stuff. And meanwhile, all I had to do was trust God. Amen. Amen? And it's crazy because now I have to go into this message. And that's why I had to repent before because I'm like, okay, I have to allow God, you know, we prepare and we do all these things. We ask God, God, he's going to go before us. We may not see when he's going to get there, but we got to trust that he'll be there with Amen? Amen? All right, that was for free. Okay. All right, now let's work on this. Good morning, my name is Mark Jeffrey, as you, uh, Joey, introduced. Um, for those of you who don't know, I absolutely love the percussion. Me and my spiritual brother over there, we hit it. All right. We love your walk. <laughs> There's your pay. <laughs> but... Just some things that I, I love to, um, that's, that's my, you know, contrib contribution to worship. Um, and uh, I tell you these things about me because in everything that I do, that we do, we should be um, wanting to be ambassadors of Christ, right? So whether we're here, whether we're in the public, uh, that volunteer at the airport means absolutely nothing to me if God doesn't get the glory in. That's right. That's 100%. You know, I, I'm, I'm glad that they recognized it, but what I'm more happy about is now more people can, can see a light to Christ. That's all I care to be. I don't care about what goes on the wall. I don't care about the certificates. I don't care about any of that. 
if it will give me a segue to introduce Jesus Christ to somebody, it's a win. Amen. 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 All right. So I'm going to ask everyone right now who's here. Everybody good? Healthy? Good? Arms good? Everybody stretch it out? Good? Everybody's good? Okay. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. And even if you're watching on the podcast, I'm going to ask you to first take your right hand out and thrust it out. Right hand, just thrust it out. I just want to see that you're able to do that. You're able to do it. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm excited about what God is going to do this year here at Coastal. Super excited. We, all as believers, have a mandate from God to further his kingdom. Number one. That's our mandate. Further his kingdom. What he requires from us is to be willing and obedient to the call. That's what he requires. All he requires on our side is that when he says, go, you go. When he says to speak, you speak. When he says to do, you do. That's all he requires from our side. Sometimes it will appear easy, and sometimes it will be hard and uncomfortable, and sometimes we'll have to make a decision to choose between God and the world. It's going to happen. Are you ready and excited for what God has planned for you this year, 2020? Amen. I'm super excited. I know it's not going to be easy, but I'm still excited because I know God's going to show up. He has not not shown up. Amen? So I'm going to ask everyone, once again, just take that right arm out and just throw it out there. I just want to see that you can do it. That's all I want to see. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Now, Pastor Rod's been preaching on what do you have, and you have it already, right? So today, God wanted me to share an example of what you have. Pastor Rod showed us an example in the Bible of the power of God. And today, we're going to look at an Old Testament example of that power of God. Let me tell you, God's Word is super powerful. There's examples not only in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament as well. Amen? He, he, he puts examples all the way through so that we can't say, oh, God never showed up here. Oh, God's power is present here. He doesn't know. He makes sure that you see his power throughout. Amen? Amen. Okay. So today I'm going uh, to ask you, we're going to be in Exodus chapter 14. We're not going to turn anywhere else. We're going to stay there the whole time. Very simple, right? Okay. So I'm going to read off uh, 14. I'm going to start right at the beginning of the chapter. And it says there, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they may turn and camp before by Hatheroth, between Migdal and the sea opposite of Baal Zephon. You shall count, you shall camp before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land, and the wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, that the Egyptians may know that I am Lord. And they did so. So now, I love, 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 this is what I, I, I love to read the scripture, but I also love to, all right. What's going on here at this time? I love the history of it. I love to get in the context of it. I love to see, well, what is that place? Why is that place mentioned? You know, I love to see those things because then I can put a perspective on what does it mean today? What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean for my situation right now? Amen? So the Lord tells, uh, tells Moses to speak to the nation of Israel and have them turn and camp before these places, Pihathroth and Migdal. Now, Pihathroth is, is a place on the Red Sea near Migdal. There's a fortress there that Egypt set up for in case any attack from Asia would come, they were ready and prepared for battle. So it's an Egyptian stronghold. Come on, y'all. Strongholds, I'm starting to drop it in there, right? Stronghold, okay. And... Uh, Baal Zephon happens to be a sacred place to uh, an Egyptian uh, myth mythological god or demon uh, called Typhon. 
So now there's spiritual evil. There's a stronghold of the government all right there. And God says, camp here. Oh, come on. Think about that right now. you got to really trust God when he says, I don't care if it looks like hell, you stay right here. Man, you got to think about, um, come on, y'all. I, I can name some places, you know, that they say, oh, you, you don't go out there after dark. Yeah. <laughs> come on, somebody. Yeah. But if God says, go out there, and I want you to camp here and wait, we got to do it. Why? Because we got to trust God's going to be there to bless those people or to talk to and, and get across what God wants to get across in that spot. Amen? Okay. So why did he tell, tell them to go to these places, these strongholds? Moses was just 100% trusting in the Lord. He was not concerned about what was around them. He didn't care about the fortress. He didn't care about what was being worshipped there. All he heard was from the Lord, and he did what the Lord told him to do. Now, here's the thing. Verses 3 and 4, we see that Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, Pharaoh uh, was kept informed. He was and kept informed of their progress, of where they're going, what they're doing. And Pharaoh sees, oh, wait a minute, they turn, they look confused. Here's what happens. God talks to us, the outside world thinks, why are you doing that? You look crazy. You look confused. You shouldn't be doing that. Who's telling you to do that crazy stuff? Come on. If they don't know the Lord, if they don't have a relationship with the Lord, they're going to think that what you do is crazy. That's right. Come on now. Here, let me tell you a, a quick example of crazy. I'm at work one day, and we're doing count, and in, when we're doing count, we're counting money, and we have to put on these blue jumpsuits. No, I'm not locked up. <laughs> but we have to put on blue jumpsuits because they don't trust people, naturally. So they put up, we put on these blue jumpsuits and we count the money. We have to count the money of all the boxes of what was taken in the day prior. So I'm talking with a guy in there and he's telling me about, you know, he, his direction. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what, what life has in store for him. So I start to plant the seed. And I start to tell him, hey, listen, I can tell you, what, I can tell you where you can go to get that plant. I can tell you where to go to get that direction. I'm not going to be the person that gives you the direction. I can tell you where to go to get the direction. But I'm not going to be the one to tell you. So we get this conversation. And I said, listen, I, had this, I was in the same spot you were. And then I turned to Jesus. And so he said, you know what? I want to talk with you after we get out of the jumpsuits. So what we have to do when we, when we get out of that uh, vault, we have to go to the bathroom. And we have to close on underneath, but we have to take off the jumpsuit and we take it off in the bathroom. So while we're in the bathroom taking off the jumpsuits, he says, Juan, uh, I want to know the Jesus that you're talking about. So now here we are in the bathroom at work, hands held, and I'm leading him to Christ. Now, anybody that walks into the bathroom at that moment is going to think, What's going on here? These, all right. So see what happens when you, when God has a plan and you just follow through and just who cares what people think That's is going to happen? Because what winds up happening in that bathroom, He says, "Now I need you to talk to my wife and my daughters because they have to be saved too." So he hands me the phone. Here I am in the bathroom, holding on his poor brother. He's crying. He, he's just received Christ. And I'm on the phone with his wife and saying, would you like to receive Christ? Your husband just received Christ. She said, yes. And so she receives Christ. And she says, hold on, i got to put my daughter on. So they put the daughter on. And then this is all happening in the bathroom. And yet, the entire time, not one person walks into the bathroom. Come on, y'all. First of all, <laughs> there's over 100-something employees here. And nobody had to go at that moment. So, thank God. Thank God. But that's what happens. The enemy thinks that what we do and where we do it is going to look crazy. But we just got to be obedient. We just got to be obedient where, 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 where we are and what God tells us to do. So, uh, man, that wasn't in my notes. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> good Lord. See, this is what happens. God tells us something and we just love it. We go. Now, further here in the scripture, we're going to see in verse, uh, verse 5. And it says, Now it was told to the king of Egypt, the people had fled. The heart of Pharaoh and his servants had, was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Let me just make sure I have it on here. Oh, through nine. Thank you. So he made ready his chariot and took his people with him and also took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen, his army, Overtook and overtook them, camping by the Sea of Hahiroth and by and before Baal Zephyr. Now, here's what happens here. The moment that we said yes to Jesus, the enemy does not want to let us go. That's what's happening there. They trusted in the Lord. They said yes to the Lord. They turned. And, the, and this is this is what happened today. The moment you say yes to Jesus, all of a sudden, the devil's economy gets a little shooken up. Why? Because you ain't spending money in his economy now. You're spending money in God's economy now. You ain't spending time in his, in his world. You're spending time in God's world. And what does that do with the enemy? It upsets the enemy. Oh, it's all about the money. It's all about the Benjamins. Right? And this is what happens. <clears throat> The moment you said yes to Jesus and turn your back on the world, the world can't accept it. Before we said yes, we were slaves to sin. Before we said yes, we do anything we, we could to make sure that sin's accomplished because we want it to feel good. Sin feels good to the body. That's why the Bible says that the spirit and flesh are at, at constant odds against one another. Okay. Nobody likes to hear that sin you felt. <laughs> It's the truth. It's the truth. It feels good to sin. To the body. To the body. But then what happens immediately after sin? There's regret. There's, oh. Right? I won't do that again. So there's a change of the heart. Now let's look further in the scripture. Uh, because there's no new tricks from the enemy. What he does, he sends the best after you. He doesn't send the weakest of his army after you. He sends his best after you. Why? Because he needs you to stay under his control. He needs to have dominion over you. So he's going to send his best after you. Now let's look at this. What this is comprised of. Pharaoh, the commander and chief leader of the nation. Would you say that's a ruler, a principality, or a, a dark place? <coughs> Come on. Yeah, Ephesians 6.12 yeah. is blaring out right here. His people, probably all the chief officers of his immediate household, 600 choice chariots comprised of the king's guard and the pride of Egypt. All the chariots of Egypt as the main body of the army, including chariot drivers and combatants. It is estimated that Pharaoh had 50,000 Drivers, chariots, 50,000. It's also estimated that he had 200,000 footmen. Because on that chariot, they were not driving alone. They had four guys with them. That's how you can figure out the numbers. So you got a quarter million people coming after and surrounding their camp. We see Pharaoh's army overtook them. They are surrounded. There's no place to go. The enemy often thinks that when he surrounds us, with his evil and his demonic cohorts that will give in. That's what he's begging on. I've got you surrounded. Give in. Now let's look further at what happens. 
when the enemy surrounds us. Immediately, when the enemy surrounds us, this is what happens. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. See that there? Very afraid. I know it's okay. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt us dealt dealt with us to bring us out, out of Egypt? Immediately, when God tells us something, the, those who lack the faith, those who don't have faith, those who are not following Christ, immediately say, why are you taking us here? You really trust the Lord in this? Look at, look at what's going on. So this is what's happening. Immediately, those who, the, the non-believers, those that have less faith or no faith, are the ones that are crying out for Fear. Fear is what's happening. Fear is what's driving them to say, let's go back to Egypt. At least there we have graves. At least there there's food. At least there, that's what happens when, when in, let's think about it today. I like sinning. That's what's happening. That's what these people today are saying. I like the internet. I like, so, I like the social media. I like all this stuff that's going on. Why do I have to turn from this so that I can follow the Lord? That's what's happening today. But it takes one. It takes one to change those people. It takes one who's obedient to God to change the, the people and the surroundings, the, the people that, and the surroundings that, that they're in. Each and every one of us here is a Moses. There are definitely unbelievers all around you saying, why are you doing this? Why are you in church on Sunday? Don't you want to sleep? Maybe you got to go to work on Monday. Why are you? Why do you want to spend time with the church folk? Oh, it's all, why are you guys all so religious? <laughs> Is that not happening? Is that I'm the only one? You holy rollers! I'm gonna get it all out. I'm gonna get it all out long. <laughs> this is what's happening. They want to deter us because the world seems like a much easier place to live in. Even though there's bondage there. Even though it's under control, not by our God, but by the small g gods of this world. And they're comfortable in it. So because they're comfortable in it and they're, they don't want to change, they don't want you to change. They want to keep you with them. Oh, come on. We're always going to have people around us that don't want to follow and be with us. But you know what? Moses doesn't turn his back on these people. He drags them along anyway. So here's my message here in this part. In this part. Even though they don't agree with you, you keep dragging them along. Keep dragging them until they see the power of God. Not from you, but through you. Yes. Let them keep seeing it. Let them keep seeing it. Listen, there's ten plagues that happen, and Pharaoh is still chasing after them. Ten plagues. And here, the, and here Pharaoh is still chasing after them. So I'm going to ask you again. Raise that right hand. Just thrust it forward. That's what I want to see. All right. If you're tall, make sure you don't hit the person in front of you. I should have said that disclaimer before. The person is like, hey, all right, yeah. We're always going to have difficult situations around us. We're always going to have difficult people, people around us. But we have to trust God in that moment. We have to trust God right there. So now let's look at how God combats fear of the people. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Now Moses says, Don't be afraid. 
Moses' uh, exhortation here turned the attention to the Lord, whose power they've already seen, whose deliverance they were about to witness and personally experience. I'm going to share a short testimony right here on that. So last year was a great year. Uh, job was going good, got a promotion real early in the year in the job. And the next promotion was right there. I was already the next guy. The moment I stepped in my new position, I was already the next guy for the next position. So I'm like, OK. And, and one of my mentors at the job said, every time you see the position, make sure you put in for it. Well, I put in for it eight times last year. Eight <laughs> times. And every time I put in for it, there came another excuse. Well, there's this, and there's that, and there's this, and there's that. I was beginning to get frustrated. My wife was getting frustrated. She was like, did you just stop already? But I was like driving. I was like, I'm getting, I'm getting, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they say. I'm getting. So I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm driving at it. And so I had to, you know, I was getting very super frustrated. And the supervisors at the job and the higher ups that are above me who make the decision, I was beginning to get a little bitterness. It was starting to, you know. It should be mine. On paper, I should be the guy. And then Val and Rod go on vacation. Then they come back from the cruise. And Val comes to me, and I'm sharing this with you. Val comes to me and says, I got a word for you and Jen. The Lord said, stand still. The Lord said, just wait. And let the Lord do what the Lord does. Um, oftentimes, God gives us a promise and God tells us something. And we want to run out ahead of God and start making the plan and preparing everything without letting God do what he does. And what I was supposed to do was just stand still, let God take care of that whole situation. So the moment that, that, that Val told us about that, immediately we had a peace. I was like, yeah, what am I getting all bothered for? If I let God do it, he's going to promote way better than if I try to do it of my own merits. It's of my own merits, I'm going to fall short. Right? So I had to stand still and trust. And I'm still standing still, and I'm still trusting. When is it going to happen? I don't know. When it does, of course, God's going to get the glory in it. Back to Moses. The Lord said to Moses, I'm going to go into 15 here. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. There it is. Remember I was telling you to stretch out. Okay? So we're going to see the scripture there and it says, it says, but lift up your rod, stretch it out. Stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. There it is right there. The Lord gives Moses a command. And this is the crux of what I want to get to. He gives that command to Moses alone. He tells Moses, you are going to stretch out your hand, not just for yourself, but for everyone around you. For your family for your friends, for an entire nation that's behind you, trusting you because we're, they're closed in. They see the enemy. They don't see a way out. But if you'll stretch out, here's the deal. God tells us just to be obedient. He'll show up and do the rest. Moses does. It's not Moses. It's Moses' obedience by stretching out that meets God's power and then everything happens. So that's what we have to do today. We, ambassadors of Jesus Christ, all of you, when God tells you to go, to do, to stretch out in faith, that you just do it. And allow God and his power to show up in that moment. That's what God wants us to do. 
This is the continuation of last week when Pastor Rob was talking about the power of God. This is it right here. If you'll stretch out the mark, God does not part the sea. And if you'll go down to the I'm going to tell you guys, you can see in verse 21 where he does stretch out and he does part the sea and he does do all that. That's in verse 21. But I'm going to tell you this. God does not part the sea until Moses is obedient and shows up first. You have to show up first and you have to be obedient to God before God's power shows up. It's not going to happen any other way. Not going to happen any other way. It has to be that way. You have to show up. You have to present yourself. You have to be willing. You have to go. You have to say it. You have to be the one first. Then God shows up. It doesn't work the other way around. Too many times we're hearing prayers about, God, I need you to do this right now. But you're doing nothing in faith. Do you really think God's going to reverse his course or change the paradigm of the way he says, when you stretch out, I'll meet you there? How many times has God said, stretch out and I'll meet you there? How many times has God said, Peter, Peter and John told the man, give me your hand. That man had to give the hand first before he can experience the power of God. Same thing here. The sea came apart until Moses stretched out his arm. God's not going to just show up just because. God's going to tell you what's going to happen. God's going to tell you how it's going to happen. But you still have to do your part. This is an equal relationship. You have to present yourself to God and be obedient to God. Then his power goes forth. We all have to stretch out in faith. This year, 2020, we all have to stretch out in faith. There are unbelievers around us. There are people around us, skeptics around us, cynical people around us that don't believe what we believe. But if God tells you something, please stretch out, stretch out in your faith. Don't worry about what they're going to say. Don't worry if they want to go back to sin. Don't worry about that stuff. Be more concerned with being obedient to God. Amen. That's all that matters. Be more obedient to God. Are you going to lose people? Absolutely. And the most powerful thing is in all this is we're going to lose people we dearly love. That's right. Because they don't want, they don't want to stick around. They want to stay in the sin. That hurts. We hurt for them. Because God loves them. But we have to. We have to stretch out. Are you going to allow the power of God to part of the sea? Work in and through you. Here's the deal. Moses had God with him. Today, we have God in us. That power, that part of the sea that raises the dead, that heals the sick, that makes blind eyes see, deaf ears hear, mute mouths talk, that power is within us. Amen. What it requires is us to be obedient that when God says, go lay hands on this person and pray for their healing. It's a done deal. That's the way you got to see it. You have to see it as a done deal. No other way. Allow God to work in you and through you. Allow that power to come out of you. I believe that that earth-changing, spirit-moving power is on the inside of all of us. I believe it wholeheartedly. I believe that this room, these people, you today, your faith can move those mountains. Your faith can do it. God will meet you there, but you've got to be willing. You gotta be obedient. That's the hard. I mean, the hardest thing is is not only trying to manufacture our own blessing and, and trying to do it ourselves, but when God says go and we go, and He tells us to stretch and we stretch, you gotta allow God to do that. You gotta allow God to do the rest. He displays the power. We just dis display the obedience. Amen. Amen. I felt like I had so much more. But I, I... There's so much that happens here. And how do we relate it to today? What Moses was going through. Moses is the only guy that sees that their way out. They're surrounded. There is physically no way out. 
But here's the deal. Here's what God does. God is not bound by the laws and rules of the world. He created the world. That's right. He created the laws. Amen. He can alter those rules and those laws. That's right. That's why Jesus was able to walk through walls. That's why the sea was parted. That's why he can alter anything to display his power so that we give him glory. Amen. That's all he wants. He's searching for those who are obedient here to give him glory. Now, here, 2020, now. When we get before him, of course we're going to give him the glory. There's nothing else we're going to do. There's nothing else we're going to be doing. All we're going to be doing is just singing hallelujah and praising the Lord that we, we talk about here. I want to be, when I get to the grave, I want nothing to be left. I want to be totally spent, did all I could do, and that's it. That's the way I want to reach a grave. I don't want to reach a grave with, I could have did this. And I should have done that. I could have said this. I could have spoke here. I don't want to get there like that. If God tells me to do it, I want to do it. I want to get there exhausted. Amen? Amen. So, I'm uh, going to wrap it up here. Just one more point I want to bring out about what the people were trying to run to. They were running to graves where God was saying, run to life. There's a lot of people in, in our circles that are heavily running towards the grave. And this next the love and the grace of God that you have on the inside of you, that's going to bring people to God. Right. It's not going to be us thumping them. And it's going to be your love. Loving people no matter what. Now, I'm going to share another little short testimony about the job. I know it's But here's, here's the deal. Like I said earlier, one of the uh, superiors that is in charge of making a decision in my job was holding, I believe, was holding up promotion for me. And he had, he lost his brother last week. By me. And so he went to be with his family and came back this week. And I could have could have not did nothing. Just let him suffer. That's not the God that's inside of me. Amen. So I went to him and I told him, how are you doing? How are you getting along? And I assured him, it's okay to mourn. It's okay, okay to grieve. It's, that's okay. <coughs> now I was doing this for a person that I believe 100% was totally against me. But I said to him, hey, if you need somebody to talk to, you come to me and we'll keep it 100% confidential. No one will ever know. That's the God that's inside of me. That's the loving grace that's on the inside of me that allowed me not to become bitter and not hold against him what he had done to me. But to tell him, you know what? You need somebody to talk to you. You know that man was in tears. We're out on the floor and I'm, I'm trying to shield him from people seeing that he's, you know, just sleeping on the floor. And, it's, and so I told him, listen, I'll check in on you. And whatever you have to share, please with me. The world needs to see God's love. Yes. Regardless of how they treat us. Regardless of how they... How they think they're going to put the nail in our coffin. We show them that we're going to bring life to theirs. We bring life to them. We bring God's love to them. We bring God's grace to them and show them. Because all I care is that they show them that God is the giver of life. That's all we care about, right? So I wanted to share that and, and listen to me. Let me just get this out there. This is not about me. This is not about, you know, dusting my shoulders off. 
This is about the God that works on the inside of me that doesn't allow me to be bitter towards a person who doesn't treat me right. Amen. But to treat that person with dignity and with respect and show them love, the love of God that may turn that person to Christ. Amen. So now if we get a segue in there and he, and he now begins to ask questions and he, he wants to know how do you have this peace and this love and then I go, well, let me tell you about the fruits of the Spirit. Let me tell you who gave me those fruits of the Spirit. Let me tell you about those gifts of the Spirit. Let me tell you about who gave me those gifts of the Spirit. Let me tell you about the one number one gift of salvation. That's what matters. And if heaven gains another, we all celebrate. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, one last time, I'm going to ask you all to stretch it out. So when God tells you, remember, it requires you to stretch out first. It requires you to move so that you can see the power of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright, I'm going to ask everyone to just close their eyes. And we're going to say a prayer here. I pray that this message to you, whatever part of the message, you know what, let God, I, I pray that God has the glory in this. But we're going to pray this salvation prayer because I don't know if everybody here is saved. I don't know if everybody here has a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask everybody to repeat after me this prayer. And I just pray that if you're here in this room where you're watching watching on the podcast that just take this from your say this from your heart so we're going to say Father Father, I believe Jesus died and rose again I believe he sits at your right hand I repent and turn away from my sins today. I accept Jesus today as my Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 If you said that for the first time, please let the staff know here, anybody with the name tag, that this message has blessed you. Let God have the glory. And just be ready. Be ready for what God has in store to 2020. Just be willing. Be willing to stretch out in faith. Be willing to share the love and grace that God has given you. Just be willing. Because his power will show up. Amen? Amen. If you guys would like to, just stand with us. <laughs> Oh uh-huh.